Good evening. The story behind the murders. A special investigation on the Essex drugs executions. But first this evening, the trail of evil that led to triple murder in the Essex countryside. Tonight, the men who gunned down three drugs dealers in cold blood are behind bars, starting life sentences. The killings were the culmination of a vicious underworld feud. Tonight, friends and relatives of the victims reveal exclusively the chilling chain of events that led to the murders. But first, Christopher Peacock recaps on the day's developments in court. Hidden from view, a Range Rover is removed by lorry to a mortuary. It contained the remains of three drug dealers who met their deaths on a snowy winter's day just over two years ago. Drug dealing is a dishonourable trade, and there was no dignity in the hard-packed snow of the Essex countryside when a farmer stumbled on a vehicle parked up a deserted farm track. Inside were the bodies of three men, assassinated with pump-action shotguns, each murdered in cold blood with bullet wounds to the head. As police frogmen broke the ice looking for the murder weapons, it became clear this was a classic execution to settle a bad drug score, a dispute over smuggled cannabis. Murder squad detectives were familiar with the pattern. Dealing in drugs is often the province of the double cross, the sting and the double deal. And so it was that two drugs barons decided to eliminate three dealers with chilling efficiency at Whitehorse Farm at Rettendon near Chelmsford. Michael Steele, who dubbed himself the Angel of Death, was given three life sentences. He's said to have laughed uncontrollably after killing the men. Also given the same sentence, Jack Wombs, his right-hand man. The pair were trapped by Darren Nichols, the driver of the killer's getaway car, who turned supergrass. It was his evidence that would prove crucial in the conviction of the two men. As a result, he's now been given a change of identity and is being protected at a safe house by the police. The officer in charge of the investigation left the court a satisfied man after the judge said the killings had a hard-bitten edge that could only horrify and stagger non-criminal minds. At the Old Bailey, this is Christopher Peacock, for London tonight. Patrick Tate, Anthony Tucker and Craig Rolfe died as a result of a festering row over a smuggled shipment of poor quality cannabis. But what's the full story behind their murders? Marcus Powell spoke to some of the people who knew them best to compile this special report. Drug dealers have as many enemies as friends. For Ivan Dibley, who originally led the triple murder hunt, his first job was to find out about the victims' lifestyles. What they were actually doing, they were filtering the drugs dealers uh, and lining their own pocket at the, at the same time. Uh, uh, what I mean by that is that uh, when a drugs dealer came to the door, unless he paid a premium to get in, then he was kept out. They made a small fortune. Tucker bought himself a £250,000 house and a Porsche to go with it. Pat Tate, filmed in prison, joined the firm a violent partner to help with major drug deals. The firm became increasingly violent to protect their businesses and finally turned to killers themselves. They were always armed, but they killed with cunning. When Kevin Whitaker, one of their drug couriers, was robbed, they blamed him for the loss and decided to teach him a lesson. He was later found dead in a ditch. The death certificate said he'd taken a drugs overdose. His parents didn't believe it. Kevin hated needles, he was right-handed. My immediate reaction was, hey, you don't tell me that he's committed suicide. He did not, because as far as I'm concerned, he couldn't have done it. Can you, could you inject, if you were right-handed, could you inject into your right arm? The police have now come to the same conclusion, that Kevin was murdered by the firm. They had uh, forcibly injected Whitaker with a drug which is used in veterinary um, circumstances. And um, he was found beside the road, overdosed uh, and um, very dead. Tucker, Tate and Rolfe were later lured to their deaths on an isolated farm track. They'd crossed one drug dealer too many. Their deaths were mourned by families and friends. For others, though, it was poetic justice. Everyone um, deserves their life, whether they be a criminal or whatever else. That's not to say, however, that the general public in this particular case won't um, shed many tears because of their demise. A lot of the public will say, well, you know, good riddance. In Essex, this is Marcus Powell for London Tonight. A story behind the chilling case that ended at the Old Bailey today.